so you got rejected from all of the PhD programs that you applied to. Let's not pretend that it's not maddening. It fucking sucks. But how do we assess what we did wrong, right? We don't get any feedback. All we get are the no thank yous. We don't get any information about what can make our application better. So I wanna walk you through eight simple questions you can ask to assess and determine where your application may not have really lived up to its full potential and why they may have put you in the reject pile instead of the fully funded accepted pile. Okay, let's dive in. First off, this is the number one thing. Did the program actually fit you and your goals? Was there a fit? Literally guys, I have seen people get rejected from Florida State and they'll get into Stanford, right? Because it's about the fit of the program and when you articulate what you wanna do, why you wanna do it, and that program is the best place to do it. For the PhD especially, it's about connecting with the right faculty, doing the work you wanna do. So if they're not doing that there or you didn't make the case in a compelling way, you missed the mark. Okay, number two, do you have enough experience? To be fair, there's no bar for experience. It's not required that you have a master's. It's not required that you have a certain number of, you know, internships or work years or anything like that. So let's just talk about the basic bar, right? The base bar for getting your PhD is that you have some work experience, so maybe it's an internship, maybe you've been working for a few years, it could literally be months, right? Doesn't have to be years, um, or and or some research experience. So if you've done an undergrad where you worked in a lab for a semester or maybe a summer research project, that all counts, right? That's the bar. If you're missing any of those, like say your experience is in a different field, maybe your undergrad is in psychology, but you've been working in cybersecurity, right? Like they don't really see that as super relevant experience. Yes, it matters and it shows that you could work, but it's not really telling them why you're prepared for this specific degree, but to work on this area of research. So you need to assess like, do I have some research experience or do I have work experience in my field? If the answer is no, you need to go build that, right? You need to beef up your resume a little bit. Number three, are you connecting with faculty? Networking and getting to know faculty and what they're interested in is one of the best things you can do to get accepted, right? Because first, they want to know who they're gonna be working with for the next four years. It's very different than applying to undergrad or masters where that admissions committee is not working with you for four years, right? Like they can like you on paper and then admit you and you're somebody else's problem. But when they accept you into a PhD program, they're, you're their problem, right? You're gonna be working with them specifically for four years. So if they get to know you and they like you, it's gonna shoot you to the top of the pile. Like, that's just the truth. It also teaches you what they value, what they like, how they work with people, and you can decide if you even wanna apply there at all. If you're seeing some red flags or things that are not interesting to you, just move on. And again, then you don't waste your time. Number four, do you have the right academic background for this PhD. So there's a lot of people who wanna pivot. They wanna go from a chemistry undergrad to a um, computer science PhD, or maybe they did education undergrad and they wanna go to, um, let's say, business management, right? Like, you can pivot a little bit, but like, let's be honest, the closer your background matches what you're going to do, the easier you're gonna have. So. It happens all the time for me to go to microbiology, to biology, or computer science, to electrical engineering, right? Like those are super related. But if you wanna go from computer science to psychology, you're gonna to have to prove that you know what you're doing. They are not just gonna let you come in because they don't wanna see you struggle and fail. It's not fun for you, it's not fun for them because they have to spend a lot of energy trying to bring you along. So if you have an academic background in your space, it shows them that, hey, you know a little bit about this area, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna pick up the material easily or you know, with a little bit of guidance, right? And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for somebody who can take a little bit of direction and then run with it. So that's why your academic experience is important. If there is a gap in your academic experience, you can work on that. You can take some classes, you can maybe get a master's, right? 
These are choices. You want to do everything you can to make your application way more competitive. If you're like, no, 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 I don't ever want to get any other classes or whatnot prior to getting your PhD, you're going to be resubmitting the same application each time and you might get the same result each time. So consider adding more if your academic experience is lacking. The next thing, number five, is your research ideas, research goals, are they salient? Do they care? And are they a match for that program? Again, there's <laughs> no perfect way to understand this, but if you're pitching ideas that nobody cares about or those faculty are like, nah, it's not going to be a good fit. They're not going to take you seriously. They're not going to see you as the person who's going to come in with ideas and really just create amazing things, right? They're going to see you as a person who doesn't really know what they're talking about, is going to hope that somebody's going to like spoon feed them things and that's just not a fun experience for them or for you. So, so you need to pitch good ideas that are hot right now, that they care about, and that ultimately the world cares about. So get clear on that. The next thing that I see a lot of issues with is the resume. So the resume is a big screener tool for your PhD. It screens you on those emails that you're sending to faculty to connect with. And then once you actually submit your formal application, it again sets the tone for who they think you are. So even if you have an amazing statement of purpose or whatever, whatever, if your resume just is kind of like, huh, I don't really know if this person's got it, it's going to kind of influence the way that they see your entire application. So get your resume in order to showcase your, your acumen as a PhD. That What that means is your education, your research, your um, professional skills, your leadership, anything you've done where you've presented or written or produced something, right? The PhD is about producing things. So you need to show them that yes, you can execute. Yes, you can produce things of value. So update your resume for sure. Number seven, your statement of purpose. So a lot of people have a lot of stress about this, but you'll notice this is number seven on my list. Because if you don't do everything else up above that, this doesn't matter. You can have the best SOP in the world, but if everything else doesn't align, you're not gonna get in. Conversely, if you do everything else, but you know this part is flat, you also might have a little bit of trouble. So what you need to assess on your statement of purpose, again, is that they see you as the exact right person to do the thing you say you're going to do, your research goals and your career goals, and that this program is the perfect place for you to achieve that. You don't need to make it more complicated. You don't need to take like a make a novel or make it like the most beautiful writing. It needs to show that, you know, your background prepared you, you have good goals, you have a vision for your future, and you're somebody who has a proven track record of doing big things and producing results. So all of that needs to be there for them to, you know, get excited for you. And finally, number eight, right, once the application is in, then you've got the interviews. So congratulations if you got to the interview phase. If some of you didn't get requests for interviews, then you know it's um, everything upstream of that that you need to focus on. If people did get to interviews and you still didn't get accepted, don't worry, it's not like you interviewed terribly. You know, they could have just had other people who really resonated more. So what you want to assess on your interview is that you are somebody that they want to work with, somebody that they feel is going to be a good person to work with. Instead of trying to overly impress them and like just, you know, talk about all of your amazing accomplishments, it's far more important on the interview to be interested in them, what they're doing, their research, how the group functions, all of that is going to show that you are a mature person who's going to come in and, you know, work with others and produce big things. Again, the PhD, you have to show that you can produce things of value um, because that's making the win-win for the university, right? They invest in you, this fully funded package, $300,000, and then what they get on the other side is amazing work, things that make the university look good, the program look good, right? So it's a win-win here. Okay, all of those eight things need to work together. You don't have to do them all perfectly, but I want you to assess where there might be gaps in each part and then work to fix them. You're gonna be great, good luck. If you still have questions on your particular application, what you can do better, I would say get help from an expert, right? 
if you haven't done the PhD before, you don't have PhD parents, it can be difficult. It can feel like a lot and you need an outside pair of eyes because, hey, you've stared at this thing for way too long. So that's what I would recommend is to get guidance, to get help. Um, I help people get into PhD programs. You can see links below and we can work together to make this totally work for you.